there, fellow monster hunters, and welcome to The Witcher Bestiary. The series where we take a look at the various monsters and other entities from the universe of The Witcher. Today's topic is actually one I didn't think I would cover for some time yet. The reason for that is this is probably the most common fantastical creature out there. And in the rich Witcher universe, which already has unique creatures like the Leshen, the Drowner, ten kinds of vampires, and many more, I thought an episode on actual dragons would not be that interesting. But lo and behold, I actually read some of the lore, and it turns out that the cliché is a cliché for a reason, although there is also a good deal of uniqueness to the Witcher dragons as well. At least enough, in my opinion, to make one video on them. Or possibly more, but we're gonna get to that later. So, without further ado, let us learn some stuff on the dragons of the Witcher, shall we? Dragons are huge scaled reptilians with four limbs and broad bat-like wings. They have long slender necks and narrow triangular heads, as well as a forked tongue. Some individuals also have bony horns on the head or along the spine. The color of the scales, dimensions, as well as the ability to emit various dangerous substances in battle, like fire, acid or steam, depends on the type of the dragon. They also have accelerated regeneration. Dragons are the biggest and most exclusive of the Draconid family, which actually gives the name of the entire class. Other than cats, dragons are supposed to be the only creatures capable of absorbing magical energy from nature. It is unknown how long their lifespan is, but it is still calculated in centuries or even millennia. The dragons of the Witcher are very intelligent. Some are able to talk. Some species even use telepathy. It is not known whether the development of the ability to broadcast one's thoughts is due to the inappropriate structure of the vocal cords and oral cavity, or is a unique ability of just some species of dragons, such as the Golden Ones. Although reasons for this behavior may remain unknown, dragons universally love to collect gold, treasure and gemstones. A trait which has already made its way into many legends. Despite what tales of noble dragon slayers rescuing innocent maidens might have you believe, the people organizing expeditions to hunt the dragons are not motivated by the desire to put an end to their reign of terror or even to win glory, but by simple greed. In some ways, tales painting dragons as terrible foes of humanity, which are used to justify half of all the hunts, are only fables. If dragons had no treasure hoards, nobody would give a damn about them, except maybe the peasants whose sheep they eat. It is worth noting that almost every dragon hunt is scrutinized by someone connected to the Jewelers Guild. Not coincidentally, despite the size of some dragon hoards, no hunt has ever led to the market being suddenly flooded with gemstones, with the corresponding drop in price. Dragons are perceived very differently among other sentient beings. However, according to Willem Trettenmert, the vast majority of the dragons themselves have an instinctive and irrational aversion to humanity. At the same time, having the gift of speech, dragons will sometimes contact other intelligent races and even enter into non-aggression pacts with them. Human attitudes towards dragons can vary across cultures. For example, the Zerukanians worship them. Moreover, the name of the country itself comes from the name of a golden dragon called Zerikantarn, while the people of the north fear them and hate them, quite rightly considering them the most dangerous and cruel monsters in all the land. Ironically, at the same time, they also pay tribute to their strength and beauty as the dragons play a role in the heraldry of many highborn strata of the population in the north. Those ignorant and little versed in classifying monsters, however, are barely ever able to tell real dragons from lesser draconids, of which there are many variations as well, including wyverns, forktails, basilisks, and more. The legendary treasures of dragons are often the reason why dragon hunters, or dragonmen as they are also called, as well as entrepreneurs and guild mercenaries of all kinds equip expeditions, and then hunt them down and kill them. In addition, the dwarves are very successful in hunting dragons. The bodies of dragons are the source of many alchemical ingredients used by sorcerers, 
Their tears and entrails are used to make medicines and elixirs, while their blood is used to make cosmetics. The tail is used in cooking and is considered a delicacy in some parts of the world. In the prologue of The Witcher 2, you are gonna have to guide King Foltest across a bridge while being pursued by a dragon. Later on, in Chapter 2, Geralt can find a magic stone which helps him find out more about who summoned the dragon. Finally, in Chapter 3, there will be a battle with a dragon. Can't really get into more detail than that without spoiling the entire game. The journal does have this to say about it though. I think it's worth noticing that despite being in-game canon, some of the stuff in this journal is deliberately false compared to the other lore. Whether it was Geralt who actually didn't know the truth, or just the devs trying to keep the plots hidden, this particular journal entry does lie to you a little bit. To quote, Once dragons were commonplace and ruled the continent absolutely. Dragon fire was the bane of cities, and dragon appetite was a constant threat to the first colonizers. Sorcerers stood against these creatures. Witchers were created to fight them. Nowadays, though, dragons are almost extinct. Sometimes fork tails and slizzards can be seen, but compared to dragons, they are like stray cats to a tiger. The beasts were exterminated by professional hunters, such as the famous Crinifrid Reavers. Alchemical components found in a dragon's body are among the most expensive on the market, and they are always in high demand among sorcerers. The legends are true, dragons like to gather hordes and have a voracious appetite, that they will satiate by eating all living creatures with no exception. Just like cats, they like to lounge in places of power. They nap there, drawing energy, but nobody knows what they use the energy for. There are five species of the great worms, white, black, red, green, and rock. Golden dragons, extremely intelligent, are gifted with the ability to assume the shape of any creature. Of course, these are just a fairy tale for little children. Dragons are smart indeed, but they cannot speak, and much less polymorph. The best tactic when meeting a dragon is to pray to all the gods with no exception. Atheists should run. They can thus extend their lives for a few more moments. It must be stressed that any of these choices would still land in death if made by an amateur. When fighting a dragon, one should watch out for its fire above all else. The breath is lethal and can momentarily end the fight. The worms can also fly and are excellent at maneuvering, so they use the advantage of altitude in combat. A witcher should climb atop a high building to surprise the reptile when flying by and use walls as protection. The beast's jaws are even worse than its paws. They bring instant death. Dragons, just like cats, like to toy with their prey, so they sometimes lift it to the air and then drop it from on high when they are bored. Dragons are also immune to poison, unworried by oils which increase bleeding and unaffected by traps or bombs. One would be hard pressed to find a soul brave enough to drop on a dragon, unless it has been hacked to pieces with an axe first, and I wish such an outcome of the battle to all dragon slayers with all my heart. Now, dragons are categorized by color, as mentioned. Lore accounts which I read are a bit confusing on what a true dragon is and isn't, but just to list them, we have black, red, green, and white. Apart from those, there's also brown, golden, and silver dragons. Now, initially I wanted to make a second video on just the dragon types, but unfortunately the lore on each individual color is a bit lacking. So, fortunately for you guys, the second half of this video is gonna be an overview of the various dragon species. Because the wikis didn't have many great pictures on them, I might also have to use some non-Witcher related artworks on them. Starting with the biggest and meanest, thus we have the Black Dragon. A Black Dragon is the largest and most invulnerable among its race, ranging from 15 to 20 meters in length and with large wings and four powerful legs, ending in sharp claws. They live mainly in swamps and wetlands, basking the entire day in the mud, and are often documented in the southern territories close to Nilfgaard and Gamera. They can spit streams of acid capable of destroying any kind of armor, 
and cause similar wounds to mustard gas. Their scales are touted as being as hard as Mahakam steel. Hunting them with anything less than a ballista is a fool's errand, as any other projectile will simply bounce off its skin. Luckily, black dragons are not easy to anger, and are often quite lazy. The avatar of the eastern god Baal-Zebuv is supposed to be a female black dragon. The green dragons are easily the most widespread species of dragon, inhabiting forest wildernesses and often making their nest close to a hot spring. Green dragons have a set of legs and a pair of wings, making flight their most comfortable way of travel. But they are also capable of stalking along the ground effectively if required. It is among the smaller representatives of their kind, a bit broader than a horse. The larger specimen reaches about 9 meters in length. They are usually greenish or even grayish in color, similar to the Draco lizards, and they can breathe toxic chlorine gas, which luckily doesn't damage the equipment. In combat, their bite is laced with a powerful venom, which cannot be treated by any form of alchemical concoction and often leads to death. Green dragons, surprisingly, are not always hostile, and some can even be friendly, but when they are threatened or denied, they can easily turn violent. The red dragons are known to live in caves and mountains and hills. They breathe fire hot enough to melt metal, and the biggest specimens can reach up to 15 meters. Their scales are stained reddish, and they have spines protruding all over their bodies. Common people often see them consuming their horses and then making off with statues and other valuables. This has lent a bad name to the Red Dragon, who can be prideful and aggressive, but also delightful conversation partners and debate competitors. The White Dragon is a rare subspecies found in the snow-covered forests and valleys of the far north. The average specimen is 10 meters long and can breathe a wave of terrifying frost, which freezes all within a range of a dozen or so meters. They have been spotted in the Dragon Mountains, but never within the boundaries of the Northern Kingdoms themselves, preferring the howling wilderness of the far north. They likely can't stand the warmer climates of Redania or the tropical climates of southern Nilfgaard. To the inhabitants of the Northern Kingdoms, they are known only from tales of several fearless adventurers, who describe their scales as light grey to bluish white. Brown dragons, also confusingly called rock dragons, even though rock dragons are also supposed to be another species, are dragons known very well by the dwarves of Mahakam. They are the least initially impressive species of the dragons. Their length is about 10 meters, with long thin bodies and smaller wings held tight around their bodies. Their craggy armored heads are perched on shorter necks, and their forelegs are powerful, ending in sharp, shovel-like claws. The scales of a brown dragon are usually a warm brown hue with harder grey scales traveling along the spine. Contrary to other types of dragons, the brown ones prefer to burrow beneath the ground instead of flying. When the stubborn hard-headed dwarves meet the equally stubborn brown dragons, conflict is often inevitable. Finally for today, the Golden Dragon, or the Draconis Aurum Nobilis, is a legendary creature considered by many to be just a myth. It is uncertain whether they are just a separate race or just very rare mutations among other common variants. The legends attribute them with several miraculous attributes, of which unquestionably are their magical abilities and changing their shapes into any other living creature. They belch destructive fire and hot steam both. The biggest specimens can reach up to 20 meters in length. Silver dragons supposedly don't even exist at all, or are just all extinct. The only mention of them is supposedly in tapestries and other pieces of art. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the dragons of the Witcher for today. Fortunately, while this is more or less all the general info available on them, there are also quite a few stories involved named dragons, both from the books and from the games. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, that one is definitely a future possibility. Anyway, what about you? What are your thoughts on the dragons of the Witcher? Did you find them interesting or original? 
or do you know of other dragons from other settings which are more interesting? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider supporting the series by watching, sharing, commenting, liking, and subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching, and the blessings of Melitale be upon you.